you ready for what's ahead in your day. Right from coast to coast, the Weather Channel has you covered. Uh, kind of like we're covered in the clouds yeah, here yeah, in, exactly in right. parts of the Northeast. Yeah, oh. It's not looking so great in across New England. I mean, talk about a non-beach day. Wait, is that a bird or a person? Ooh, I'm not sure. It almost looks like it could be two people. It could be two people. I don't know. Wow. Either way, it's not a fun time for them. But, I mean, I guess if you're at the beach, you can maybe, try maybe and enjoy Maybe they it. like that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. One well, of my I... earliest experiences, actually, uh, with the Atlantic Ocean was at Nauset Beach when I was little. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, and it was a rough day like that. Uh... You went back again after that? <laughs> I know, right? Can you believe it? It was a great time. I love the coast of uh, Massachusetts. It's yeah. beautiful. Well, we're going to talk more about what's happening here um, on the coast. There's a couple issues, and actually not just coastal concerns for your vacation, but um, we could have some travel issues, so we'll get to that, too. But of of course, the tropics. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, things have quieted down a bit, yeah. and now we may be seeing a resurgence of uh, activity and getting going in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, in the coming days. And actually, if you look at the satellite pictures right now, there's a flare up of thunderstorms that wasn't there yesterday. Remember yeah. we were talking about clear skies? Yeah. Yes. Over this very same area, it's a lot of thunderstorm activity, a lot of lightning going on. I'm not sure that's the disturbance that ultimately emerges. But oh, something's happening. Something's happening down yeah. there. Yeah. Something to keep an eye on. We have a lot to talk about today when it comes to the tropics. Now, who gets the wind, who gets the coastal flooding. Let's start in Nantucket, where you've got a terrible forecast today. Temperatures only in the 60s. Showers around. Very windy. In fact, winds may be up over 40 or 50 miles per hour. This is definitely a stay inside. Sometimes it feels like, I don't know, a late fall day as opposed to a September day. It's just not, not going to be great out there. And you're blaming it on a couple of things, mainly the coastal low. This is going to continue to send the moisture in, keep the showers around, keep the wind strong across this area. But we have a few other problems, too, in the Northeast. And the fact that we're at king tides right now is actually a big problem. That's why we have a lot of the coastal concerns around the time of high tide. But this isn't helping. The fact that we have the onshore flow and the rain right now in Boston, not raining, but it is raining out in Chatham. Wind gusts there, 25 to 30 plus miles per hour. Boston, just a raw day for you. Not really going to see much improvement in your weather today. Day. Why? Because the low's hanging out. Everything's been kind of stuck in our pattern. Nothing really moving very much. And so this meanders around out here this weekend. Um, the winds are actually going to maybe even increase because of the low pressure hanging out here, mainly on the coast. It's not going to be everywhere inland that feels this wind. But boy, if you're in Boston, if you're out at the Cape, uh, if you're in some of the islands, it's going to be a very blustery weekend for you. And flood alerts are up. Coastal flooding advisories up here, coastal Maine, coastal Massachusetts. We also have coastal flood warnings, advisories and watches all the way down the coast. We're not affected necessarily by this low all the way down to the Chesapeake Bay, but we are affected by the direction of the wind, and we're still affected by those higher than usual tides because of the king tides. So there's a lot of gauges that are going to hit at least moderate flooding as we look at the high tide cycles today, tomorrow, even into Sunday, and possibly Monday in a few spots. Montauk, New York here, next uh, high tide coming in just after 11 a.m. today. Combination of the higher than usual high tides and the fact that we've got that onshore wind going to make it tough here. We could have moderate flooding. Uh, pay attention to those areas that um, are usually prone to it. Now, um, Greg, a lot of times we talk about these coastal floods when we talk about the tropics. That's not the case up here today, but we are watching the tropics. We are watching the tropics, and we're seeing a bit more activity in some of the areas that we were watching mm -hmm. uh, than we saw yesterday. So right. they're perking. And it's that first weekend of the fall. <laughs> yeah, right. but it doesn't go. come in until Sunday at like okay, eight something true. in the morning. Okay. So we'll give we'll give a fall yeah. break. Literally, like hanging on to summer, <laughs> like you're hanging off the side of a boat or something. Oh my goodness, crazy, crazy. Well, of course, you know it's one of the best states to chase. Ooh, my goodness. Well, you can check out some of the best videos of the day when we reveal the weather gone viral top five this afternoon. It's going to be that day. Gonna gotta, be that day. Yeah. And at some point, we're going to want four days. In fact, my comment was, why don't we just have three day work weeks? Jen, <laughs> I mean, you might be on to something. Let's do it. We, we put this question out there like something's imminent. Or, no, there's nothing no, happening there's here. Nothing imminent. Although I will say they did a test trial in the UK. Something like 90% of those companies, they, they continue the four-day week. Oh. And something like uh, over half have made it a permanent change. Wow. So the so test trial worked. It was productive. I mean, because yeah. money talks ultimately. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. All right, keep those comments coming. Share them with us on social media. Whoa. All oh, right. Good stuff. Uh, if I had to pick out of that bunch, I might have to go with the well, lightning and the, the shelfie. Kind of 1A, 1B for me. Oh, really? You yeah. just said number one isn't number one for you. 
Uh, well, no, no. The Shelfie from uh, South Florida. That was a good Shelfie. And then the Lightning, which would be, again, 1A, 1B. Uh, that's why I'm, le I'm, le I'm leaning on that top five. Yeah. I'm with you. I would take the Shelf Cloud. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. You know what I'm hoping was in there? The turtle. Thunderstorms with possible severe weather. We're going to look at St. Louis for an example where, you know, Saturdays are day off. It'll be warm, warm on Sunday too, um, but thunderstorms come in and then finally we get a front through that breaks down our temperatures, not really making it cold or anything, but just back to average. Temps will be in the mid 70s. All right, so what's causing all of this? Because now we've had two days of storm chances. So you can see, first of all, this system right here, you can see this low pressure, this disturbance right in here, but also the big kind of parent low up here. So you see how everything's kind of connected like that. Um, we're going to watch these all swing through and swing east here, but they extend down. And so we will be watching for some showers along that. We also have another disturbance that's coming in a little further south. Uh, we'll track that as well. So a couple showers out there right now. Nothing severe. Green Bay. Um, we've had a few showers up towards Marquette. Um, and not even that widespread, honestly. But looking at the weekend, we've got some rain chances. It actually could be heavy at times across parts of Kansas, maybe Missouri. And severe weather is possible. We'll keep an eye into Illinois as well for some of that heavy rainfall. So that's the concern getting into the weekend that we might actually be dealing with some flooding issues. Friday's forecast, this is today. We've got two areas that we are um, looking at for that potential. One over here again along our front and then the other is for that new area that we will keep an eye on getting into the weekend. So watching for a couple of showers, maybe some storms, Fort Wayne, South Bend, down towards Indianapolis and then into south central parts of uh, Indiana and Illinois. Then we get to your Saturday and now this is overnight uh, into tomorrow early tomorrow morning. We have the new system coming in, some chances of storms and this evolves as we get into through the weekend with several chances of rain. Less than 100 miles away from the capital of Austin, you'll find our best in state in Texas Hill Country, the town of Fredericksburg. And this time of year, it's like taking a trip to Germany. Well, with us now is Amanda Kuhn, the more about uh, the area. Now, the city has ger a German background. So how do you celebrate that at this time of the year? Gosh, well, this is uh, one of our favorite times of the year here in Fredericksburg. Beer isn't your thing. Well, apparently, there's also wine country to enjoy. So how big is that? And what kinds of wines do you produce in the area? Yes, so this is also Texas wine country, which you can enjoy any day of the year. We have over 70 wineries, vineyards, and tasting rooms. And our uh, outdoor activity, I'm sure there's got to be a, just a smorgasbord of things to do. What can we find there in terms of outdoor activities? Well, one of our favorite local things to do. A city like this probably does the holidays really nice here. What are the holidays like in Fredericksburg? Oh, my goodness. So the holidays here in Fredericksburg are really like... Uh, a Hallmark movie. It's just decked out every store. Holidays being a really nice time to visit, but is there a best time you would say uh, you would uh, you want to visit? Well, that would be kind of like picking a favorite child now. <laughs> it's always a great time to visit Fredericksburg. It'd be the best thing in Texas. We're calling it best in state, but are there any other spots in the Lone Star State that you think deserve an honorable mention? Oh, totally, totally. You know, too. So lots to see there. It was hard to pick one here. So congrats. Uh, Amanda Kuhn, thanks for joining us today with the Fredericksburg Convention and Visitor Bureau. And uh, again, congrats on Best in State. Yeah, pretty cool. Again, one of those spots, hidden gems you wouldn't think about, but yeah. not too uh, hard to get to. As you mentioned, just an hour away from both Austin as well as uh, San Antonio. Cool stuff. Well, America's Morning Headquarters hitting the road. Systems can originate from. There's a lot of options, actually. A lot of options, especially this time of year. Right. I mean, it could really span anywhere from the Garapian to the Gulf, North Atlantic, the Tropical Atlantic, and each one of those locations, there's a, almost a different reason why mm -hmm. tropical cyclones occur. It's pretty stink. It's distinct, I should say. And again, it's all about timing of the year as well. So let's get into this year. One of the ones that right. we talk about all the time, these waves that come off the coast of Africa. You know, this is probably your classic hurricane origin story. When you think about a wave coming off the coast of Africa, it's small to start, it grows into a tropical depression, tropical storm, then a hurricane, sometimes a major hurricane, um, and a lot of really intense storms have started this way. Yeah, these are the Cape Bird variety that are mm. so good at becoming major hurricanes, um, but we haven't seen a lot of that this year. We haven't. You have to go back to June and July for barrel. That was our, you know, big Cape Bird storm. Yeah, and we saw that and we were like, oh my goodness, we're already getting these storms right. from these waves. Subtropical low pressure system. And then it changed into a tropical system. So it's it almost morphed. like it was a North Atlantic gale. Yeah. 
and then somehow acquired tropical characteristics and then became a tropical cyclone. Right. That's another way it can happen. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Now, you talked about this often. You got to watch sometimes thunderstorms yeah. that are over land because sometimes they can move over water and turn into a tropical system. We saw this with Hurricane Barry back in 2019. These are some of my favorite ways in which you can get tropical cyclone growth. You have a thunderstorm complex, which has nothing to do with the tropics. Let's say oftentimes in June or maybe later mm -hmm. on in the hurricane season, they form over land these thunderstorm groups. Then they move over warm water and something happens and they can turn into something entirely different, a tropical cyclone. Yeah, you got to watch these things closely because, again, they can turn into those cyclones, mm -hmm. which, of course, can have big impacts. And, and we certainly saw that. Again, we can show you Barry when it hit New Orleans. And we do often talk about how fronts along the coast this time of year can be dangerous. Got to watch them because they carry with them those ingredients, the sort of gently curving and, you know, counterclockwise wind patterns. They collect thunderstorms over warm water that can spell tropical trouble. Yeah, I mean, we just recently saw that almost happen, right? We had that front hanging off the southeast coast, mm -hmm. almost brought us a tropical cyclone. It ended up being potential tropical cyclone eight. But boy, did that bring a lot of rain to North Carolina. And it actually was really a front was what really gave us Francine that moved into Louisiana yep. a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. So, again, these fronts, fronts can be dangerous. Fronts yeah. can be dangerous. You saw it in 2016 with a bond to what we're dealing with right now. And another potential origin for a tropical system is what's called the uh, Central American Gyre. And it's just a big general area of thunderstorms. Sometimes it's known as the monsoon trough, but it can help spawn something like we're keeping an eye on. We have some chance of tropical development from a, a new way this year anyway, uh, and it's associated with, as Jen mentioned, maybe a uh, Central American gyre with the help of the dip in the jet stream coming in. Mm -hmm. All that matters maybe to meteorologists a lot, but to those of us along the northern Gulf Coast and the southeastern U.S., there is a chance for a tropical cyclone to move into the Gulf mm. in, a, you know, next week. Yeah, so we certainly have to be prepared for it because right now we don't have much brewing in that zone at the moment. So it's hard to pinpoint where exactly it's going to form. And if you don't have that information, we can't tell you exactly where it's going just yet. So we got to be prepared really along the entire Gulf Coast. Bring, bring on. You ready for what's ahead in your day? Yeah, from coast to coast, the Weather Channel has you covered. And no doubt we are dealing with some issues here in New England. Coastal concerns, we've been dealing with this low kind of hanging off the coast here the last couple of days. And look what it's bringing, dreary conditions. It is cloudy, it is showery, it is breezy, not beach time. <laughs> Correct. It's, awful. it's like that's the weather that would want to keep me away from the mm -hmm. ocean. Front. I wouldn't mind watching this from inside because yeah. I do think it's pretty. Mm -hmm. For sure. But I would need, not just like a screened-in porch, I would need like a glassed-in porch <laughs> to, uh, to watch this. Um, not the only spot, actually, that we're going to be dealing with some of this onshore uh, wind that'll be a factor out there today. And the fact that we have the onshore wind, it may not be raining, but we could still have some flooding. And we're going to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. And, of course, what's going on in the tropics, because that's going to be the thing that really takes over, I think, a lot of our attention mm -hmm. as we work our way through basically into the next week. And this is an area to watch being posted by the National Hurricane Center. Huge area. Nothing's there, though, yet, Dr. Postel. Not really. And, you know, the, it, there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast. Mm -hmm. So we need to sort of, like, put that as part of our context. Mm -hmm. But, yes, something could emerge from the Western Caribbean mm -hmm. into the Gulf next week. Just keep an eye on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we'll talk through some of those details coming up. Mother Nature taking no days off this weekend. As